Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live on our Patreon channel. And I may have shared this testimony with you guys some time back, may have been years ago even, but I really wanted to come back to it again uh, in the event that I haven't or in the event you happen to be new to the channel here and you just never saw the video about cystic fibrosis. And uh, it was about a young boy that actually had CF disease that my stepdad wanted me to pray for many years ago and uh, who had not a good prognosis, as many would know, anybody that knows a little bit about cystic fibrosis. Uh, kind of going to do this in a two-part purpose here. So I want to play a little clip here. This is from uh, the Mayo Clinic, just a little co comment that they make about it, just so you can kind of get a little better gist of it if you're not familiar with it. Let me back up just a little bit. These secretions plug up the tubes, ducts, and airways in your body. Although there is no cure for cystic fibrosis, people with this condition are generally able to live normal lives. There are many tools and techniques doctors use to help manage this complicated condition. And with improvement in screening and treatments, life expectancy for those with cystic fibrosis is better than ever before. And and I can agree with that statement the Mayo Foundation has said. I was looking at some of the statistics on it. This chart right here, uh, for example, goes from uh, 2006, I think, to 2011. Uh, so the first column being the 2006. And the mortality rate then, and let me blow this up a little bigger so I know that you can see this. Mortality rate, uh, median age at death, uh, back, back in 2006, you normally didn't live past the age 25. Of course, you could live as far as, you know, you could live longer. Could They did see some go up like 36 years old, things like that. But uh, as time has gone on, that number, of course, there has increased uh, quite substantially, especially if you have ever been diagnosed with CF disease there, all the way up to 33 years old. And there have been those that have survived all the way up to 53 years old. So that's a that's good news, but still, that's an awfully short lifespan, no matter which way you look at it. Um, I say this because, you know, when I look at divine healing and the things that God uh, not can do, he has done already, whether or not our faith kicks in for that is the absolute amazing cure for everything. It's Jesus Christ, without a doubt, 100% hands down. I know that there's been some uh, question, you know, uh, especially since we got into the X39 patches there. You know, I've gotten some emails where people will say, Brother Steve, you know, you cannot replace divine healing with a patch. No, I agree 100% with that. Uh, but then again, I don't know of anybody that doesn't believe and divine healing that doesn't go to a doctor as well when they're sick or if they've got some kind of complicated issue. Uh, in fact, that's one of the reasons why we know when we go to pray and ask Jesus for, you know, believing in that he is our healer, that by his stripes we were healed, that we've already got the testimony because we've been diagnosed with whatever the case may be and God has helped us with it. I've also dealt with over the years people's faith lies in different areas. Sometimes, like in the one lady I shared the testimony with you on, she is 83 years old, had a brain tumor. And I knew from talking to her, divine healing, instant divine healing was not where her faith lied at. But the more I spoke with her, I realized that I could get her to believe that God could use the doctor's hands and that she would get a recovery that even the doctors couldn't explain. And exactly that did happen. This was a lady that was only given a 50% chance to survive the surgery. And then if she did survive, she'd be a month intensive care, a month on ground floor. So basically a two-month hospital stay, which is kind of obvious when you're 83 years old and you're fixing to undergo brain surgery, right? Especially for cancer. Um but in her case, when I prayed for her and she had that faith and believed, she walked out of the hospital three days after surgery. And as we had said before praying for her, that even the doctors would be stumped by her rapid recovery. And that's exactly what happened. But she never didn't follow through with the actual treatment. She actually did it. And so even if you are looking at you know, you want to use this X39 patch to help stimulate your 
your own um, uh, stem cells in your body to help you in some way. Nothing wrong with that. But of course, we never exclude when all else fails. Or even if God uses that to help your faith, maybe that's something that would just give you that little edge to believe that Jesus Christ is going to heal you or that he'll use that means, like the, in the case of the lady with the, the brain tumor. But then there's some cases where you don't have a patch, you don't have a doctor, or the doctor's prognosis, like in the case of CF disease here, back in 2006, the life expectancy was the age of 25. The young man that my father wanted me to pray for, that was back in the 1990s. Around 1990 or 1991, Imagine what the life expectancy was then. In fact, this young man, he knew more about his own disease than most people know about their things today. And I would say he was probably about 10 years old. He knew that he wasn't going to live much longer the day I met him. And my dad had told me about this young man and he had said for some time, he said, son, he said, you know, a good friend of mine, his son has cystic fibrosis. And he said, I really <clears throat> am wanting to do something. I want you to pray for him. He said, but the only problem that, <clears throat> that I can see in all of this is that, you know, he doesn't, his, he doesn't believe. And, uh, and he said, and if he knew that I was going to have you pray for him, he said he would be against it. He said he's an atheist. So I told him, I said, you know, Dad, it's okay. I, I understand. So I said, you know, God will present a way one way or the other. Because my dad really had it on his heart that if I prayed for this young man, God would heal this young man. And he knew that there was no hope for him. And my, my, my dad had a love for this little boy. One day, and maybe, I don't know, maybe six months, a year after he had asked me about praying for this little boy, my dad shows up at the house early one morning. He's going fishing, and lo and behold, he has this little boy with him. He doesn't say anything to me about it, that he's the boy, but for some reason in my heart, I knew that this was the boy he was talking about. Not to mention, not every day my dad shows up to the house with a little boy to go fishing. So... I had to go get something from the car. And as we, you know, I asked him, I said, you want to go out with me? He said, sure, I'll go with you. And he walked out to the car. And so I asked him straight out. And I didn't remember what the disease was or anything. I just knew that he had a life-threatening illness that he wouldn't live long unless God intervened. And I said to him as we were going out, I said, I said, hey, by the way, I said, uh, I said, I may be wrong. I said, but I hear that you've not been feeling very well. I just took it in my heart that he was that boy. And he said to me, he said, well, yeah, he said, I do have, I have a, a, a rare disease. He said, uh, it's called CF. And he said, uh, I said, okay. I said, uh, well, what does that do? And he says, well, basically, he said, I'm not going to live much longer. I said, Wow. So that's pretty tough. And he said, he said, it's all right. He said, I kind of understand it and know it. And so I started talking to him a little bit. I said, I, I asked him, I said, have you ever heard about Jesus before? And he said, yes, I have heard a little bit about him. Not much, but I've heard a little bit about him. And uh, I said, did you ever hear that he's able to heal people? And that he was sent to the world, came in here, died for people's sins, things like that. He said, yes, he said, I've heard that too. And so I began to communicate with him a little bit along these lines. And the more I talked to him, I realized this little fella actually had a lot of faith. And so at one point, somewhere along the way, I asked him, I said, do you believe if I were to pray for you? that Jesus Christ would make you well, that he would heal you of the cystic fibrosis and that you would not die. And he thought for a second 
He said, you know what? I do believe that. And so I asked him, I said, would you like me to pray for you? And he said to me, he said, I would like that very much. And so I prayed for him right there in the, out there in the driveway. And we came back inside the house and talked with my dad a little bit more. And then him and my dad went fishing. Well, it was sometimes later. I don't know exactly how long, but I mentioned to my dad, I said, that was the, that was the young man you were telling me about, wasn't it? I had cystic fibrosis. And my dad said, yes. I said, well, I did get the chance to pray for him. And so he kind of left, let things go. didn't say anything else about it. Well, years went by. And my dad moved to Michigan, and uh, so we didn't talk as regularly as we often did. But I flew up to see him one day up in Michigan, and I asked him, I said, by the way, Dad, I said, whatever happened to that little boy I said that I prayed for? And he said to me like this, he said, oh, my gosh, Steve, he said, I forgot to tell you. He said, you're not going to believe this. He said, but, you know, he's now an adult. And he said he has a baby of his own. Well, again, we saw what the life expectancy is. They lived to about 30 years old. And back then, even before then, you know, 26 years old was in 2006 was the average life expectancy. I could only imagine that maybe back in those days it was only till about 19, 20 years old. And that's kind of the way that young man indicated to me he wouldn't live to be an adult. And... I said to my dad, I said, oh, wow. I said, married already, has a little child? He said, absolutely. He said, but you know what, son? He said, after you prayed for him, he said, you know, he always had to go to the doctor. They were always in and out of the doctor's offices, going through treatments and things like that, much like what we saw in that video there, right? He said they were always going through those types of treatments and everything. And uh, he said, but, but the thing was, they couldn't find a trace of it in him nowhere. His father, he said, continued to take him back and forth to the doctor, still trying to figure out what in the world happened. And I said to him, I said, did you ever tell him about being prayed for? He said, I didn't say anything. He said, no, whether or not his son ever told him, he said, I don't know. He said, but one thing I do know, God totally healed him 100%. So, you know, listen, never limit God and how God works with faith. In this case here, this young man needed divine intervention. According to doctors, medical authorities, there was no known cure. But Jesus Christ is the cure. But in the case of the 83-year-old that had a brain tumor, in her case, her faith she only believed that the doctor's hand could, could be moved, that God could do it through that means. I've seen that over and over in life as well. It all depends on where the person's faith is at. Even as this movement about these patches at LifeWave, what we've been talking about and sharing with friends and things like that, and it's not just X39, they have a lot of the different products that they have that really do work, they actually help. And sometimes it might be exactly what a person needs to get their faith to boost up. They might believe that God could use that to help them. And so it's not here an advertisement about this life wave whatsoever. But the, my point is, is you do get some people that get that negativity idea. You know, oh, you're just going to replace divine healing. No, I've seen divine healing happen in every way imaginable. My own mother was a beautiful example, totally blind, quadriplegic, and there was nothing the doctors could do. And one day God said, pray for your mother's eyes, and my mother got 20-20 vision the same day. She did walk before she passed away too, even though she was a quadriplegic. That came over time. That didn't come instantly. I've seen everything you could, like I said, you could possibly imagine. So many testimonies. I can't wait to share with you as we go along in this area. But uh, I just wanted to say God bless you. I know we're coming to the end of this year here. But always believe. Because Jesus Christ truly is, as Hebrews 13, 8 says, He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. That I do believe.
God bless you. Have a